Jason, if you had to choose between a rotary and a V8, what would you choose? Both. Welcome to chapter 27 of my RX323 Resto videos. Yes, it's been a while. I've been pretty busy. Uh, work has been flat out, my daily job, and also my kids with their sport has also kept me very busy. And plus, winter, I hate the cold. I can't stand being in the garage, even when it's cold. Even though my garage is sealed and I can put a heater on and stuff like that, I still really couldn't be bothered getting in the garage when it's that cold. But I have been championing it a bit to get back onto the car. So uh, in this episode, I fix up the wiring and finally get that um, ignition issue sorted out with the through the ECU. Um, get some cool into it, get it up and running properly, and that's about it. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, uh, one of the things I haven't done is um, put some oil in with the fuel. Um, this rotary doesn't have oil metering pump on it anymore because it's this um, hybrid Renesis motor um, so we need to put some of this in there so the recommendation is, is um, 1 to 100 so for every 100 mils goes into um, 10 litres so I've got some of this here so th this car is a 45 litre fuel tank um, it's about half full at the moment so 45 litres is 400 roughly 400 mils this does have 400 mils left in it um, so half tank, 200 mils. So I'm gonna put all of it in there because I'm about to fill it right to the top of this tank. So here we go. Mm. All right, now I'll fill up the rest of the tank with some premium unloaded. Okay, so you might remember from the last episode, I had some issues with the car um, running issues um, with it switching off and I thought it was something to do with the power source coming through the ignition switch but I found the issue it wasn't that it was my black wiring you know I had two wires back to the front so I've sorted that fixed that um, the ECU was dropping out of power when it was cranking um, I don't know how I'd bypassed it and got it to run before but anyhow I fixed that now and I've got that so that it's got a constant power source even when it cranks over but during that time it flooded the engine um, so I've just pulled out spark plugs again these are brand new ones um, these are NGK Iridium ones so I'll put these back in now um, and then we'll plug in the laptop and have a look at the ECU see all the um, all the triggers that are coming out hopefully it'll show up on the laptop if I can get that to work and we'll see if we can fire up again all right we're in the car um, I've got the Microtech program installed on the laptop. I'll just turn the key on. Oh, there's the pump going. Connect. And everything seems to be okay. Pump's gone off. So I've got up here all the, the data. Any faults would come up here. The battery okay, um, air okay, air, all that sort of stuff. So, um, RPM obviously is off, um, the map sensor is at zero, which is right, water temperature is about 20 degrees, which is what it is about outside the moment, thank Christ. Voltage, you see it's just over 12 volts, so that's right as well. So everything seems to be okay. I've got, I haven't got everything connected. Um, air temp, so that's not connected. So, let's see if it starts.
that's good. It's amazing what happens when you get your wiring right. Hit the key and it starts pretty much straight away, which is grass. Um, I've got checked, I've got oil pressure, um, alternators even working, I've got um, full voltage at the battery, and the battery's charging via that. Um, so that's another thing that I've got to tick off as well, because um, I was a bit unsure by removing the external regulator and re rewiring the car, so it's good to see that all works okay. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, put some coolant in it, so I had it running for a couple of minutes there. Uh, put some coolant in it, pressure test cooling system, so I'll do that now. Okay, uh, I'm just going to put some water in it first and then I'll pressure test it and make sure there's no leaks. If that's all good, then I'll drain the water and put some coolant in it. So I'm just looking around as I go and making sure there's no coolant coming out from under the car and so far so good. All right, that's all full now. Um, one thing I'm going to show you is just the filler thing I used here. You can see it's got a really fine gauze in there just to catch any rubbish that may have been in the watering can that I filled it up. But that's all full. I haven't put any water in the overflow yet. Um, I'll do that once I put the corn in and, and that. So now it's time to pressure test it. So this is my old trusty snap-on pressure tester system. God, I haven't had this out so probably since 1990, I reckon. So let's just see if it still works. All right, we're at 15 psi. There's a bit of a leak just around the, the nozzle there, but <sighs> nothing dripping under the car, so let's just hope nothing's going inside the rotor housings as well. So that all looks good. I'll just double check. It's all good, good. Magnificent, not a drop. Let's pressure off now. Beautiful. So, I'll drain the water out now and put some coolant in there. Mm. Alright, I've drained out all the water. Now, um, when I took the piston engine out, I collected all the coolant from that. That was really, really new stuff. It was only put in not long before I bought the car. So, I've got it here. So. <laughs> Well that's pretty amazing, you can see the level there, that's exactly how much coolant was in that container and it's spot on right to the top, although I haven't done the overflow yet, I filled that up. So one of the next things I need to do, so this is the, uh, the wires for the thermofan which plug into this plug which is here, this is the plug for the thermofan, so I'm just not sure which way these go around, so I'll just left them like that, they'll just slide, they'll, they'll just slide into that connector, so I'm actually got the polarity right, so I'm pulling air this way, not pushing it this way. So I just got to be careful, make sure that's right. So this was just a preliminary list, list that I'd created, so I can get rid of my engine oil filter. I've done that. Um, cool temp wiring, I still haven't done that. Oil pressure gauge is working. Pressure test cooling system, we've done that. Fill of cool, done that. I still haven't sorted out my reverse lights. Um, Fuel pump feed is fine, ignition feed is fine, tight wiring, still gotta do that. Still gotta do the exhaust properly and a spanner check. And I'm sure there's a few other things I'll need to do on that list as well. All right, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And in the next episode, I've got a bit of um, putting together of the car still to do. Um, now that most of the wiring's all sorted, and the car runs okay. Um, 
put all the interior back together, put the ECU back where it's supposed to go, and then maybe we can start having a little bit of a tune. So I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye now.